Hey guys, this is Alex. Hey, and this is Wakar. We're in a new podcast setup, and we had an idea to start a podcast. Yeah, I'm joined with Alex. Alex, we didn't even come up with a name for the for the podcast. Oh, literally. literally. Okay, it's the WWA podcast for now. I'm sure we'll think of a better name. Um, but yeah, we we did a lot of Q and As, and some of the questions you can't really answer on a story. We wanted to further develop them, and I feel like we posted a lot of case studies and these kind of things, and we wanted to get more of a flavor for how we are as people as individuals our journeys and aside from just the technical side more about us as individuals and our journeys so you've prepared some yeah. questions we actually had very very good questions uh so we've kind of selected yeah. between uh, wakara and myself around three to four so let's see if we can cover all of them if not we'll cover two and then we'll do another i think i think one. you had like a hundred we've selected yeah, yeah, we few. selected just a few like and then we'll, i think we'll cover maybe three or four and we see how time takes us and then Exactly. Get right into it. But yeah, we wanted to make a traders focused podcast uh, with questions pertaining to that, but it won't be only that. I think it'll be more also your journey, your success, sacrifice, all of these kind of topics that are relevant to trading, but also uh, pertaining to life. So yeah, let's jump right okay. into it, man. Let's start with the first one. So the first one is from Brian142. And his question to us is Did your family support your beginnings? Um, first thoughts on this one okay so family support at the beginning so i mean i, I think in this one we have a similar thing i, I mean we all become from kind of more traditional families yeah traditional our... families and you know what um I, i'm relaying this from what people say in the community of like oh should i tell my parents i'm trading or sh when should i tell them to drop out and the common thing is everyone's parents wants what's best for them and they're going to say things that are you know what they believe in their parameters of belief from their generation what is normal uh, so you were advised to go to university. I was. I went to university also for myself. Um, yours is different because you were athletes and kind of things. But uh, that's the first thing to say. Our parents want what best for us. So in that sense, trading, okay. it comes as a is that best for you or not? It comes with that doubt because it's it's not normal. Um, so I mean, I can touch upon that. I think it's nice if you touch upon your athlete journey. Yeah. Uh, uh, to give some context. Yeah. So basically, of course, my yeah. dad didn't support yeah. it at the beginning. Uh, also because he also did not support fully i mean he supported but he didn't support fully me even going as a football player okay. so when i was back in spain i was actually wanted to go as a football player and who was kind of no 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 like you're and actually, you told me before school wasn't even for you exactly you yeah. didn't enjoy classes or whatever i never enjoyed classes um I, it's actually I, I was not like the worst student in class mm. but i've never been like the best student i was more like a c grade student okay uh, my whole life uh, actually just studying early to pass yeah. that was kind of my my idea with with school and then my dad is always kind of like you have to study you have to go to university uh, had an offer to go and play north of spain mm -hmm. uh, and he was like no 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 you're not going your, your footballing career was from since you're a kid yeah and you were going through academies you're going and you even played for valencia um and you were telling me as well a lot of your teammates for example your friend here mm -hmm. um they went all in on the football side yeah. whereas you were now not allowed to or yeah, it was not like not allowed to, but at the same time, my dad was like, you know, this is very risky. Uh, you're not, you need to go to university. Always Encouraging you, yeah. Yeah, of course, always have like a backup plan. Mm -hmm. And I completely understood that. So we kind of find a balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understood that position too. And I ended up going to the US with a scholarship. So that was the kind of wow. balance that I found with my, with my parents. Okay, let's not drop uh, football, that is called soccer in the US. Uh, let's not drop the studies, mm -hmm. let's continue with university. That was kind of like I went to the U.S. Uh, with a scholarship. So, of course, my dad was like always kind of in a traditional way, always kind of go to university, study, apply for a job, more that side. So when trading came into place, I was already coming to him before with a couple of ideas, couple of e-commerce stores, couple of things. You did the traditional online um, yeah. routes of Amazon, yeah. e-commerce, trading, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and trading is one that hits. Okay, yeah. Crypto. As crypto, well, okay. Which I luckily. Man, you were an early adopter then. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't put money into it when I was, so that would have changed completely yeah. a lot of things. But uh, I went through a lot of things. I was just kind of like, like going, going, testing things, see what I was liking, what I was not liking. Um, I actually noticed very early, so it was just a year where I went over a lot of things. So I bombarded my dad with, oh, I want to do this, and I know this will make me millions. And I, so I, I mean, also, if I was your dad, I'd be thinking, man, he's, he's lost. Exactly. He doesn't know what he's doing so and he's hoping I, for the best. Yeah. So he was not fully supporting that side because also imagine like a kid coming to you. I mean, you were like parent. 19 or 
Yeah. First of all, your age, and second, you had no results to show, which is the Nothing. big one. Yeah. And maybe he sensed. I'm, I'm guessing you were looking for a get-rich-quick scheme or yeah. looking for 100%. something to escape traditional education because he saw it. He, he encouraged you to go. It wasn't something you wanted to do yourself. Oh, yeah. or, or even coming with him like as a 10K or 20K, 30K for him, I know will have been nothing. Mm. But not because of the monetary thing, because they could be like a flop. Or this the could be something not consistent. Yeah. And he knows that, I mean, you have to be working for the rest of your life, majority of the times. Mm -hmm. So he wants something solid that will actually set your career. That's the main thing. Properly. I think what every parent wants. I mean, yeah. mine too. Um, I mean, mine is more of a Asian parent thing. And we, we don't really have too much choices. It's either yeah. you do medicine, dentistry, some finance thing. But when I kind of think like, okay, every Asian parent kind of encourages this. When my younger brothers are now getting to the stages of university and they're looking for advice from me, from my other brother, from my parents. And then I think, okay, wh what would I advise them? Then you don't think, okay, it's a hard one. let me tell them to do a geography degree or something like that. No offense to anyone, but no. it's, yeah. it's more like you want to put something that is going to um, financially be stable for them in an industry that has longevity, something mm. that they can apply their intelligence to, uh, something that has progression in the career. You're, you're looking for things that our parents were looking for. Yeah. Uh, so in that sense, I'm in complete alignment with that. And I've given my brother's advice is in line with that. Um, uh, but I think that's when it comes to, let's say, average people where you want to encourage them in a path that is going to kind of in, give you success. Of mm -hmm. Let's say you become a doctor, you know, more or less you're going to earn six figures and you can do that year in, year out. It's not a business where it's one year, six figures. I mean, that would, next. Be, the, that would be in the UK. Ah, uh, true. Maybe, maybe not in Spain. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it gets to the point where you're encouraging things that are going to give mm -hmm. them uh, a good path. Um, but now you, you can't say to your, let's say, son, you don't know if they have a more entrepreneurial mind, if they had a traditional yeah. mind, what kind of work ethic they have. They're 18 years old and you don't even know what you want to do at 18. So in that sense, we were both encouraged from our parents to do what makes sense. Yeah. from a societal place from you know how their lives have played out you're giving normal advice but i think mm -hmm. as you go through university you meet people i met people your mindset changes i think social media is a big influence on who you follow yeah and it started to and shift, also very shift mindsets risky. also very risky. Uh, of course there's, there's pros and cons to yeah that. yeah because for me uh at the beginning stages i was following not the right people right so that's why i also was coming to my dad with the wrong words with the wrong okay. things and with the wrong intentions as you said no rich quick scheme or yeah. things that actually your dad that is more experienced in life that has been probably seen so many things scams or or just things that they flop uh, very easily or careers that don't work uh, so i was probably he was more kind of actually it's worth mentioning what does your dad do that's oh it. yeah my dad works uh, for wealth management yeah. in ubs so for me it was always kind of like follow the financial side mm. and i'll be happy for him but if not, like any sort of business or working for a company will have been also cool with him. No, but I think that's particularly interesting because he's in the wealth management. He's got clients. Yeah. He's in a form, a trader in, yeah. in a different way, but he's yeah, a yeah. trader or an yeah. investor for clients. And therefore you're coming into his field and let's say, hey, I'm looking into this Forex thing. I'm yeah. looking to become a trader, but I have no professional background. I'm not learning yeah. the things that he learned. Yeah. I'm uh, using online space to kind of guide. Uh, and even though you're coming into his field, what was kind of his... Uh, response to that exactly so that was a main thing uh when i came with forex he was like ah oh, no 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 trading day trading whatever doesn't work also because of his experience straight up doesn't work it's straight, it's yeah. straight up doesn't work <laughs> also because of his experience also because he's been doing it for 25 years uh his way of uh let's say diversify, diversify mm -hmm. and it's nothing to do compared with what we do like we follow technical analysis my dad doesn't even look to technical analysis, nothing. I mean, it's so, different because they're not day trading, they're investing. Exactly, they're investing. So, well, he's looking into companies and they're long-term yeah. uh, Plus, they have a whole team. Yeah. He has analysts, he has a whole team of uh, people looking into what's the next place that they can put. I mean, e either way, it's like experience. he has experience in the industry yeah. and he's seen everything. Yeah. And then if you're coming into, let's say, I, I feel like Forex has a very dirty name. Uh, and especially for your father's yeah. generation yeah. with um, plenty of scams that are still going on. I'm sure he was thinking, out of all of the offers you've brought to me of e-commerce, whatever, don't, don't pick this one. Don't pick this one, <laughs> don't pick this one, yeah. Okay, so how did that progress? Uh, that progressed in the sense of... Uh, but initially, to answer the question, they were not yeah. supportive. Yeah, not supportive. Yeah. Uh, basically, what I did is like I had some money that my granddad left me when he okay. died. So that was supposed to be for a master's. But as right. you know, I'm not too much into that traditional education side. 
So basically what I did is I took that money and started investing in, in courses or okay. self-development courses, uh, whatever, books, everything. All that money was uh, gone for two, three years, plus two, three years into that. So then my dad calls me one day, like, I've checked your account of your granddad. There's no money left. Oh, you actually spent it all on courses? All. Oh, wow. All okay. in, yeah. all in. So, so it was kind of... Only for trading or actually all of these e-commerce, Amazon, whatever? Was everything. Okay. Was everything. So uh, let's say an e-learning, the online learning space. E-learning. But okay. majority went into trading. Okay. Um, because, again, the e-commerce side, the, let's say the crypto side, that was for one year, I tried it all. Mm. So for a year, I, I bought a lot of courses. Uh, but then for three, two years, I bought just Forex, uh, technical ones, etc. So from there, the transition was, okay, now I'm learning so many things. Let me put things together to see that it works mm -hmm. for me and then prove my dad, look, this is what I'm doing. Okay. And this is what I don't want to continue or apply for a job because what I'm doing works for me uh, and things like that. It was a very risky one because at the same time, I knew that maybe I'll have to show a lot of money. I, I was kind of in the situation. I, was like, I, I remember the story because yeah. that's a, around the time we met yeah. in your last year of university. Yeah. And um, I think he even through, through his contacts, I think that's yeah. something worth mentioning of yeah. how he set his contacts to help you and your sister get uh, the best yes. jobs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And initially you took, you took yeah. it to buy peace, let's say. Yeah, and I actually had like um, an offer to work for uh, the fund division on UBS in Madrid. Oh, that's the thing. I never took it. Your dad is giving yeah. you the contacts of your city yeah. of the wealthiest. So yeah, in that yeah. sense, you could have probably got one of the best jobs, yeah. starting jobs. It was an internship. Mm. You know, it was for six months. Prove yourself. You know, of course, because okay. those those places are not places that will accept you anyways right. if you're not valid. But it was at least I had the opportunity to prove myself for six months, uh, which I never took it. Okay. Um, and that was kind of like oh, I have to sh maybe I have to show him a lot of money. What I have to show him. Oh, so you, 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 you didn't like start one of these jobs like to convince your or tell your dad, you know, OK, let me let me try out. Let me listen to my dad or you directly when you graduated, you're like, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what kind of um, reaction did he have? Uh, not good at the beginning. Right. And then I didn't know what to say. I didn't know if show him money or whatever. And I ended up showing. Okay. So I was like, look, you see, I have this. This will cover me for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. uh, because also, I never wanted to show him money when I was in my last year of university because my parents were very scared because they know myself and they thought that once I make decent amount of money, I will drop out. Okay? Uh, because they knew I didn't like you, university you didn't. or school. You, you, were you didn't in the position where you could have? or? Yeah, okay. but at the same time, I was not stupid because I've invested my three years right. uh, into right. something, I'd rather finish it. And I think that happened also to yourself. Like you were already in a position where your fifth year, fourth year, maybe was not even well, worth spending the time in there. I think that's but like where you go sensible versus, I mean, if, if you want to put a, a label to it, your uh, university college dropout, you could have been that story yeah. of I'm a university yeah. athlete dropout, no. whatever. But uh, I think, well, I don't know your opinion, but for me, it's like, uh, you invest already so much time. I know mm -hmm. it's a scholarship, but indirectly money. Yeah. Uh, it's better to see it out because you never know. In life. Yeah. Exactly. You never know. I had a, a year. It's fine. Like uh, I didn't enjoy the side of, of studying or going to classes, etc. But I did actually enjoy the side of football. Yeah, being yeah. with my teammates, uh, being with them, having fun, uh, go and travel with the team. I actually enjoyed that side. So it's like one more year. Uh, I couldn't trade London session. That was a yeah. problem because in the US it That's was at night. 2, 3 a.m.? It's 2, 3 a.m. And I had to wake up early. So yeah. I wake up very early to now do like the New York session. Okay. That was the only session I could do. So that's why also something that we, the internationals did is COVID really helped myself. Because um, you came back to Spain. Exactly. Yeah. So what happened is we were actually needed to go to classes in my university. So when COVID hit it, uh, what internationals were doing to get back home is like, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna, um, how do you call it in English? They're gonna lockdown. They're gonna make a lockdown of my country. Uh, now my family's saying that I need to go back. Or, or was mm. So basically, you did your finals from home. I remember exactly, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. All, all we wanted to do the finals from home because it was our old last year, <laughs> and it was like we knew that it would be way easier to do online. Yeah. So four months before. Uh, we graduate, we all the internationals went home, mm. majority of them. 
So that allowed me to do online classes, but now I'm in Spain. Oh, so you didn't I have to train them. Yeah. Or you didn't have to do your fo- the gym, the morning exactly. sessions, the games. Exactly. You just had time for yourself, actually. Yeah, it was online classes, plus now London and New York. And that's when actually... Oh, because you had the myself. European times. Yeah, exactly. yeah, okay. So that six months boom for me. Yeah. And that's when I could also show... Right my before you show your dad. Okay, exactly. that lines up. That, that, lines would, up. that would line up. Yeah. I mean, to speak about my side then... Um, yeah. Yeah, traditional parents and myself too. I was I was confused at eighteen. No one knows what they want to do, and I, I was I, I'm not the typical. Uh, I was rubbish at school. Blah, blah blah. I was actually pretty good at school. I worked mm. really hard. I was trying to be the top top of the class kind of thing. Yeah. I would study hard, and and my parents would get me private tutors and very very education based. I think I missed out a lot on like the fun side of childhood. Let's say where I wasn't going on vacation that often or I mean mm-hmm. I don't come from the wealthiest family but uh, m- my priority of the family was education so that's always like the mindset yeah. of what you're encouraged to do what are you doing on the weekend I'll have an extra class go to your teachers and ask for extra help these kind of uh, I house remember I, I met your dad in London yeah. and he looked like you I mean he's a doctor so yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and he comes from all of our family is like doctor or whatever so um, and all of my cousins have done the same thing so yeah. for me it was like okay I'm, I'm decent at school I have decent grades um, so what I, I had, let's say, the luxury to pick what degree I want, and mm-hmm. I went through the natural of medicine, dentistry, whatever. Uh, you don't know what you want to do, so you do some work experience, and then eventually I did pick dentistry through. Uh, I like working with my hands. Uh, it was it was a good career, work life balance. There's a lot of pros to it, so I pursued that. I went to Madrid. But why did why did you pick uh, dentistry and not, for example, your dad is a cardiologist? He's a doctor. So I mean, I, th- okay. that was one thing. I mean, this is a funny one, side topic. So. Okay. Um, my dad is well connected in the hospital, so I did okay. like work experience with every department in the hospital, oh, okay. neurosurgery, every every department yeah, I did yeah, a few days. Then. Yeah, because I was like, okay, should I pick medicine? Yeah. And every single doctor, literally every single doctor said, don't do medicine. Oh, that's kind of oh, fun. Wow. I mean, they're like, I think the NHS has lost respect for doctors and they're not paid as much as they work. And yeah. it's, it's a lifelong studying. Like you graduate and then you have to do your specialization. That's years of training, years of exams. Mm. And into your 40s, you're still doing exams and studying. Yeah. So it's a, it's, you have your professional development, but it's not an easy thing at all. I think it's one of those degrees that you have to have passion. a strong passion. Yeah. If not, and you I can't be money orientated, to no, be honest. No, no, no. You get paid you good, but you work so hard that you're paid normal, actually. Yeah. Um, oh, so I went through that, and then I was like, okay, I kind of had my mindset on medicine. Yeah. Then I found the alternative of dentistry, which is, has all of the pros of medicine. Yeah. Um, without the cons. I don't have to do night shifts. I don't have to do exams when I'm 30. That's good. So, and you have the elements of entrepreneurship. You can have your own clinics. So it lined up more with my character uh, mm-hmm. and I pursued that. But man, six year degree is not a quick degree. And especially from the ages of 19, 20 no. to 25, you change so much as a person. Your, your thoughts, beliefs, uh, the people you meet and then people yeah. you fall apart, not fall, uh, you know, grow away from, grow into other friendships, whatever. You're, you're at such a stage where you're so impressionable and learning so much and then when you get into them books then you get into the right things online mm-hmm. your complete belief systems change and i was in the beginning very passionate about dentistry of man i can do so much where you can be like a cosmetic dentist you can pursue mm-hmm. different masters and you can make you can actually all the elements of like the new age the digital digital age you could bring into dentistry and then i started following these people and i was like man they're killing it so i actually got really inspired by the big things you can do in dentistry um and for me, the trading side came kind of, man, I'm a student and my parents are not giving me much money. But you started directly with trading. No, so you had like previous. I mean, uh, I, I did, a, I did, a, I did a drop shipping. I did a drop okay, shipping okay. for teeth whitening. Uh, oh, I, I called good. it Pearly then. I don't think I told you this. No, you didn't so know. I sm- started a very small e-commerce company on Shopify, whatever. Uh, okay. And then I later realized the things you're buying from China are probably not best for your teeth, which, yeah, which yeah. I studied during the degree. So I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. probably not ethical. So I, I dropped yeah. that, but. Um, I think it was more of a flare of I have the entrepreneurial inside me. I want to do something extra. Mm-hmm. Um, university is a very tough degree. You have clinics, you have exams, yeah. whatever. But at the end of the day, it's not a nine to five. You have hours to play with. Yeah. Man, let me let me do something at university. And initially started in line with dentistry because okay. it makes sense. Um, but then you kind of get sick of being a broke student, uh, especially because my friends had done a three year degree and then were mm-hmm. graduating and I was still at university. And I see they're earning, they're going to London, they're whatever. So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm falling behind because I'm still a student and they're earning money. Uh, and yeah. then I also, because I went to an international university, it was a private university, so all of my friends are super wealthy or come from good families. And uh, I mean, my dad's a doctor, but it's a one household, it's one income in the house and four kids and different fees yeah. and university private schools that the disposal income of the family is very low, even though he's a doctor. So 
in that sense i didn't have luxuries of hey, buy buy i mean if i ever bought a 200 dollar pair of shoes game over. like my dad would be like what are you doing so in that sense it was um i come from a good family but i i didn't have luxuries or whatever yeah so when i'm a university student and my friends are going to fancy restaurants and whatever i couldn't keep up um so initially i started i have shame to ask my dad he's already sending me to university he's already helping me out yeah. i'm I getting to 23 university a, a year was pretty expensive. an expensive one right and uh, and he's investing in my career and my future yeah. not have a good time at university of going to fancy restaurants yeah uh, and i hated asking uh, and it's really embarrassing to ask especially when you're no longer 18 now you're 22 23 yeah, yeah. ask your dad for money it feels like mm. so i was like man I let, let me try things online and naturally through instagram i started to find things whatever uh and then trading was one that i fell into i think in a similar way to you as of like the get rich quick oh, it seems so easy you do these signals you mm -hmm. see all of these people with the lambos whatever you're like man this I mean, you get invested in the lifestyle first that's kind of cool oh he's young he's doing whatever uh, and usually there are university dropout that's in my mind like when you're in an exam season yeah, yeah. and you're studying and you're scrolling like, man i'm studying and he's my age earning uh, that's what happened to me yeah. i started following the wrong people at the beginning exactly and you know kuko yeah uh, and this is always a funny story i don't know if i told you but at the beginning well, no idea what we we're doing literally we just download the meta trader yeah. uh we just putting money through a broker uh Kuko and myself together in one account, okay? <laughs> Sharing analysis. Full leverage because we, we didn't know what was account management. Yeah. We didn't know what a stop loss was. But did you have any learning at that point or was it signals? No, no, no. It was not even signals. It's like a friend told us, buy or sell. Uh, and then it was with Forex news. So when there was a red carpet, yeah. something would move. Yeah, that yeah. was what we knew. As oh, so you hope for the best. Literally, NFP buy. <laughs> literally like that. It was buy and our goal is like, um, okay, let's try, get to rich. Reach, let's try to reach 10k. No, no, not even that. Yeah. But let's reach 10k yeah. and we go to Ibiza for a week to party. Oh, god damn. You, you like were that. a write off as a kid, man. Was, yeah, <laughs> we were like eight, but the different we were 18, 19, I don't remember, something like that. Mm. That was our goal. We're like 2k up floating, yeah. whatever. It's like, we're going to Ibiza. No, no, we're like, we're going, we're going. And he's like, should we cut it? One is 2k, whatever. It's like, you're looking at know. the boats, you know, oh, like, if we get 3k. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, he was like, no, 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 10k or nothing, 10k or nothing, boom, zero. We did that know. a couple of times that summer to try for, for the for the vacation. I, it didn't yeah. turn out well. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I think the good thing about our journey, or maybe our transparency, is that we're very relatable. We started in the same position as most people. We yeah. went through the on. No one's born a trader, and there no isn't. One. There's no genetic potential. There's no aptitude for it. There's no like books, real books you can read to learn on it. Everyone yeah. goes through the same journey. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like the online personas people make is, oh, I'm a good trader, and I I've, I've been like this. And, and they don't really develop how or why or how they got to that stage yeah. and through the lifestyle people just flow with it the reality is it's hard yeah. and everyone goes through losses and everyone's i think roped in in the same way they want some form of financial freedom they see this as a way out probably is isn't for most people it's, it's not yeah. um uh, but yeah actually to, to get back on track um so a few years into my degree i start trading mm -hmm. uh, i don't have the money to even put money in and then blow yeah. you know let's make 10k or whatever so um i try to be through the academics of my life i try to be a bit more sensible i know it's not a get rich quick or maybe it can be but i'm i'm not that lucky so i went through let me do courses let me read a lot online but i didn't have the money for courses either at least you had no disposable income so i went through like as much as i can leech on free material i watch all the youtube videos i i would even be in dms of people like hey i saw you're in this course you mind sharing something with me i was a, i was a dm hustler <laughs> uh, to really get any information i can I, I rinsed baby pips i rinsed online courses uh, and i couldn't afford to even do a live account uh, and i think this is actually one of the reasons is how i turned out how i did is because i didn't trade live live capital for more than a year because i didn't yeah. have capital yeah. and i knew it's pointless to do a 100 hundred dollar account and i think you were lucky in the sense i think so i think because so because if i had the money i would have put yeah and the true studies 90 percent of people lose all their money yeah. in the first 90 days. i lost my demo money in the beginning so it yeah, would have been the same for real money maybe yeah. worse um, and you focus more on the the, the learning and the learning yeah. side on the oh let me analyze this let me back test this yeah. rather than like let's make money like for example i did and one of those which i lost <laughs> eight months of my time doing that yeah. literally and then after that, I realized like yourself. Yeah. And then I stopped literally no money for a one year and a half. Yeah. So for me, I was, yeah. I was demo for the longest and um, I was bouncing from style to style of yeah. what I was picking up. I went through a phase of very retail, mm -hmm. the traditional Fibonacci structure, 61.8 head and shoulder nonsense, transitioned to more Elliott wave. 
uh, through... I remember that in your Telegram. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and actually, th- this is another weird story. Yeah. So I was posting in Telegram and I didn't claim to be anything. Yeah. I was just posting my analysis and posting my trades. And I had no intention of being like a mentor. I had no intention of people following me. Uh, it was just I had a group chat and I was like, told my group chat friends to, to follow the page. Yeah. Slowly through word of mouth, it grew. Um, but mm-hmm. my intentions were that just to post whatever I'm doing. And if you scroll to the top, yeah. you have, yeah. uh, you see the head and shoulders, you see the Ichimoku cloud. And it, I, I was bouncing from style of, okay, this isn't working. Let me try this. Oh, this guy's talking about this. Let me investigate Let me it. it. And I went deep into Elliott Wave. Um, I tried to do the certification, realized there's no point, but I went deep into the curriculums of Elliott Wave. Yeah. Uh, I got pretty competent with that. Again, it's hard. Um, then I went through Ichimoku Cloud, tried to pair it with Elliott Wave, where it's an indicator, but it looked like a proper trader. You have all these lines and <laughs> colors. Like, this is what a trader looks like with, with the indicators. Like, okay, this is going to work. Uh, I started posting that analysis. People said, like, oh, what is this? Whatever. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I literally replied to people like, I'm just figuring it out too. Yeah. I don't know. Let me learn from you. Like, man, I, I don't teach because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, then slowly, surely, I, I met uh, different people, learned different things. Uh, bounce from idea to idea but i think um there's not real curriculums online or real plans mm-hmm. so, yeah, everyone's bouncing from style to style and figuring it out um so in that sense to my parents there was nothing to say and i didn't even tell them I, for me it was just a side hobby or a side hustle there's not even making yeah. money so it's not a hustle it's just something i'm developing an interest in and i think trading is one of those things is once you're in you've, bro- you've got that initial you're interest in forever you're in for life because uh, you're always knowing that okay if i lost yeah. this money and someone made that money that could be me yeah. And you know that there's limitless potential if you know what you're mm-hmm. doing, et cetera. So I think it's a forever curiosity of how to mm-hmm. solve this puzzle. Um, so then I, I started to bounce from ideas, uh, started to get a bit more competent, not really profitable. Uh, and then it got to, okay, I'm improving my uh, precision. I'm improving my risk reward. Met you, met Wally. Uh, and I think in terms of mentors, I didn't really have yeah. mentors, but I had plenty of people I looked up to or plenty of people I learned from and got mm-hmm. an insight from. But I think the main development one was when we did our daily Zoom calls. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to explain it, like kind of how that one year went. Literally. I remember we met in Valencia. Yeah. I DM you yeah. and I actually thought I was at that point very passionate about trading. I was already figuring out things by myself. I was at that point, I remember trading supply demand uh, with a bit of a structure, still figure out, figuring mm. out things, but already in a very good path from before that was. So um, then I remember I saw an Instagram story. I used to follow every single trader and not to learn anymore uh, about them, but more about like connecting with people, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, you trade Forex. Oh, let's I, see. I think that's because you know that there's not a university you can go to for trading yeah. or you can't go to your father. So it's like, let me connect with people and learn things. Exactly. That was my point. Yeah. So then I saw, I think I was following you. I don't know. At that point, I was not following you. I had someone that reposted you. I remember someone reposted you okay. a trade that I followed. So then I click the story and I see your profile and you didn't have pictures at that time. So I thought, oh, this will be a fake. Oh, I wasn't a social media. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, were yeah. not social media. But then I saw your story and you're literally on my city. And I'm like, okay, he trades, whatever, yeah. but I don't see pictures. Is he going to be fake, whatever? So, okay, it doesn't matter. Let In me hindsight, say- I wish I did have more posts because I was, I was yeah. actually a ghost online. Yeah. Yeah. So I but said, then, I, I then, you, then you found the Telegram to know I'm into trading. and then, Exactly. Okay. I saw actually you were posting trades or like in Telegram, something, something that I saw you were a trader or it was like an entry or whatever on your MT4. So I just send you a DM. Hey, mm. you're in my city. If you need anything in terms of clubs, restaurants, anywhere yeah. to go, let me know. And then you were like, oh, I'm here with some friends. I think one mm. of your friends studies in Valencia, right? Dentistry? Um, or, yeah, I mean, I went with my friend. All the, all the dentistry bars yeah. in the city to visit friends, yeah. Yeah, and I remember we went to, um, we went to a pre-club. Yeah. That actually, at that point, I thought you were drinking. Do you remember? Nah, and then, still don't. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And you're a halal boy. But, <laughs> but at that point, I didn't know. And we went to a pre-club place, whatever, and we spoke all the night. Yeah. And that day, we realized we kind of were in the same path. I mean, I've got to say as well, just to let people know, you were really, uh, what's the word, hospitable. Like you didn't know me, you didn't know my yeah. friends. You reached out to connect. Uh, but then when we arrived directly, you picked us up, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, and oh, that's a nice car. And then I went to, and then I was expecting like, okay, we're going to have to queue up whatever. Directly we're in, because I think you knew the people there. Yeah. And everything was ready. I met your friends. And I think most of the night we were talking just about trading, actually. Literally, yeah. literally. And at that point, I think we realized we kind of were in the same path. Or stage. A yeah. stage, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so, and we connected, but then it, it ended up there. And then because you were going, I don't know if back to, back to Madrid, back yeah. to Madrid. And then I was going back to the U S and I had preseason. So we didn't spoke for a month. And yeah. then after a month, we reconnected on a zoom call. And then I when we started, that, yeah. that's when we started to share actually like our screen yeah, yeah. and actually showing what we're doing, technicals, yeah. technicals and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And then someone that, I don't know. Someone then, I, I mean, long story with Wally is that, yeah. um, People were trying to put me and Wally together for a long time. Like, oh, I know this guy, Wally, he's lit. Yeah. He's, he's a sick trader. And I think it's, at this point, we'd, ha we'd, been, we'd seen the dark side of the industry. Yeah. So we knew all of the pretenders. We knew that there's a lot of scammers, whatever. My immediate response was, I don't want to meet this guy. I don't know who he is and everyone's successful, whatever. So I, I really resisted that. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it another time with him. Yeah. Uh, but eventually we did connect online as well. Um, but it was a Zoom call where the person introducing us and me and Wally were there and I was kind of like quizzing Wally. Like, okay, if you, if you know what you're talking about, you should know these things. And he kind of answered everything in line with someone who knows what they're doing. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Uh, at this point, I didn't really have trader friends. I had a few on loads of Telegram groups. I was deep in discords and whatever, but I didn't really have a circle or a team. Um, I was like, and then we had just reconnected. Yep. And I, I thought Wally was pretty decent. And then we did the same thing. We shared chart work. Uh, let me just make a group chat. Yep. And I'll think of a name another time. So I was like, okay, let me just make, quickly add these two numbers. Let me just call it WWA for now. I'll think of a better name. Yeah. And we never came for a better never, name. Never came. <laughs> um, but uh, that's kind of how it started. And I think from that day, for at least a year, we did daily Zoom calls for New York That session. was September, if I'm not wrong. It was September, yeah. yeah. Right when you went back to the US yeah. uh, for your season. And um, I, I think Wally would tell his story better yeah. of like how he was with his parents and pretending to go to university and all of that. But That was very funny. Um, yeah. yeah, essentially he was going to uh, university lectures, but he'd already dropped out. But his parents didn't know and he was coming to a coffee shop to do zoom calls with us literally uh, but i think in that sense i was not that good of a trader you were still figuring it out but yeah. wally was like made money he was already established yeah which is why he actually dropped out but i think he was still learning a lot because he was more on the retail side uh, but literally. made it work but he was i mean this is one for when he's on the podcast but his retail knowledge is crazy crazy like the the thing he, i think he studied way more than both yeah. of us put together on retail yeah i was um, not say i was not able to be profitable fully with, yeah, with retail and he was actually already at this level with yeah. retail yeah. so we saw him evolve from the retail to what we started doing etc mm. and we saw his journey was was pretty crazy too yeah i mean i think we talk about our journey as a three yeah. of like what happened on the, that one year of zoom calls yeah um, but more to, more to answer the direct question was I didn't uh, have anything to show my parents and therefore didn't mention it mm -hmm. and um, I never really had considered let's drop out for that year mm -hmm. and when stuff again a year is a long time or not depending yeah. but when you're doing daily zoom calls of seven hours and really drilling each other and asking each other questions and figuring things out you we learn so much in that one year and because um, you know I don't delete my charts on TradingView I keep them as they yeah, are true. sometimes we scroll back to 2018 or whatever it was that years ago now but I still have my like 30 pip stop loss and Literally. all of the colorful things um, but, and you can see the journey through but um, it reached a stage of my second to last year uh, so two years ago now of my, cool. of, of my university where things started to click and then we started to uh, do well yeah um, and that's, where, that's when you even like Stop paying your university by yourself. I, it was not that I paid the last two years of my university. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, no, not the last year. Last year and a half. So okay. My dad paid the first semester of that, the fourth year. Yeah. And I paid the second semester. Didn't okay. tell him. And then I told him I'm paying the fifth year. Yeah. Um. Uh. But that, in that sense, like, I guess that shows that, that I had was, no intention exactly, of dropping out. It was for me. I was not. I'm paying myself. That point in there, do you think was like a important point for your dad to see oh what he's doing is working or still um, he didn't care man, he, was didn't, like, he didn't really ask like basically oh. my dad got a bill every month or okay. every semester of pay the thing and i think the bill stopped coming because i paid it yeah uh, and he didn't ask and then i think it's six months later he's like I didn't, I didn't pay your fees in a while i was like yeah yeah, yeah I, I covered it whatever oh, wow um and then uh, but i didn't really tell too much but he sees when i'm in the house when i come back for summer or whatever mm -hmm. i'm always doing this thing and he knew I was doing Zoom calls with you guys. Yeah. He knew your names and whatever. So he knew I was up to something. He knew it wasn't illegal, whatever. Yeah. But he didn't, he didn't ask me anyway because he didn't take it seriously enough to think it was going to be a thing. Yeah. He just thought, I'm, I'm playing around. Um, so that sense, university was never a dropout thing. But then in the last year is when it got tough. Of like, in my mind of like, man, I'm, I'm five years in. I know. I'm right there. Man, so many hours of clinics, so many exams, projects, 
deadlines, course to work, my thesis. There's so much stuff going on in the last year, and that's when things are picking up. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is this is really inhibiting my growth. Maybe I was like, man, I could be putting all of these hours, or I'm waking up um, and then going to clinic directly, trying to trade from clinics. Yeah. I mean, I did that, and I think a lot of people have seen that as well. Yeah. Which is a topic in itself of like um, how to make trading work when you have a job, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think the conversation only came now with my parents of uh, now they've seen I've graduated and they didn't know any other any other. So like, okay, so when are you getting a job or you know when are you doing what your do applications you do now? Now what yeah. are you doing? And that's when I have to be like, mm. uh, and I've, and I've, I'm still going through those yeah. conversations actually. Like when I've been home, it's it's always a back and forth or discussing pros and cons. But as I said in the beginning, our parents want what's best for us. Yeah, and um, my parents specifically don't really care about money. Uh, my mom specifically doesn't care at all. That I don't care if Same. you make millions from trading, do dentistry. It's good for your career. It's a yeah. respected one. It's a stable one. My dad is a bit more understanding. So he's, like, he's like, okay, money's mm. also very important. Yeah. And if you can get a head start in life now. But he's like, don't leave dentistry. He's like, come back to it in a few years. That's what I, I was going to say, for example. Um, like you presenting to your dad in a way that is like, look, I'm doing this thing. I'm getting money. It's not like I'm dropping it. Exactly. I'm not yeah. dropping it. Am I open a clinic or mm. am I, am I use my degree? That scope is still there. And yeah. I thought that, like when I was having that last year living with you guys, yeah. I'm like, man, should I, should I drop out? Yeah, I remember Wiley was that. always pushing me. He was like, drop out, man. Drop I did it. You drop out. <laughs> and like, what are you going to do dentistry yeah. for? Uh, and then it really played on me. Like, yeah, I'm probably not going to be a dentist because I yeah. know what they earn for the first five years. I know what I'm going to earn. 100%. And um, it's hard work. It's mm. not like, uh, like we are now, man, we're going to the pool. Where we're going to the gym, we have our time freedom, we trade, yeah. you know, our sessions, and we're living a very comfortable life. Mm -hmm. and I knew if I was being a dentist, I'll be hustling, and then my neck would be gone, and hours. whatever. So, um, but I knew that it has potential because I know, like when I was saying, I, I, I knew the scope of the career of how big it can be. Of yeah. you can be a millionaire as a dentist, even in the UK. You don't have to be in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that that is not something I should drop ever. And I know that okay, the dentist that is not doing well, who's just on a salary, is the NHS. The working for the government yeah. and just doing work and he's paid for his time but we have for example isaac's dad you know a yeah. lot of people that have done well in their careers uh all of my university friends fathers have kind of built clinics whatever yeah. and you see that other side i think the privilege of going to private university and seeing uh well-off dentists is that mm -hmm. they start their career young they get cash they save for 10 years they save everything they can uh, specialize to get more cash flow use that cash to then open clinics and then it's different then it's yeah. a business then you leverage other dentists time and, yeah. and it becomes a big thing but what do you need for that you either work as a dentist for 10 years and save cash or do something else to save cash yeah. but the end point is when you have capital you can invest it into a sure stable business yeah and maybe that's something down the line and i, I mean, know why i want to keep in the industry with that degree i'm 100 percent sure you will do it at some I point so, in yeah. life because i think if, if you have an x amount of capital if you put it into property it's a tricky one you have ups and downs but slow returns Whereas I mean, it's the, also slow returns in your mind now. What we used to, yeah. yeah. What we used to. But, I mean, your traditional investment is like put it into equities, put it into stocks, put it into gold, put it into property. And yeah. there's not, crypto is not considered a real one yet, yeah. of like traditional. So in that sense, you know your returns are going to be between 5 and 10%, but a clinic can give you way more than that because it's a real business. Yeah. So I know that's somewhere I can put my money later on in life. Uh, so when it comes to my parents, I'm more leaning on that side. Like okay. in my mind, it's more like, no, I'm going to be a trader. I'm going to make this work long term because it's way more fun and yeah. fulfilling. But I also know that to reassure my parents and maybe even to myself is like, oh, I'm not dropping dentistry. It's a pause. It's a pause on dentistry that I'm going to come back That's to uh, when I when I can then take the business side of it. Uh, and also because I know I have good contacts through my university and, and they're going to be putting up clinics in the next five years or so that um that maybe that's the path for me yeah. later on but let's see but for now uh, i think both of us we're enjoying this yeah uh, and um both a lot similar of scenarios because both traditional families not even just us like... i think everyone everyone i think no. everyone out there that's yeah. a trader is like um it never started off as a real thing yeah it never started off as something you were considering at 18 but it's something you found out later on in life when you're thinking mm -hmm. about money essentially yeah and it's very money driven actually it's either i can't pay the bills or my job's not giving me enough or i don't like my job or I'm a broke student, um, and it's very rarely, coincidentally, mm -hmm. it's very rarely someone who has 500k and like, let me invest this money. It's always coming from a, I'm broke, let me make more money, yeah, of course. rather than what it's supposed to be, which is investing capital, yeah. which most people don't have. Yeah. I mean, uh, at anyway, young ages, is the you, you probably side. wouldn't anyway. Yeah. But um, I mean, uh, that, that's another topic. But I think we we hit another question. Yeah, let's that go was, I think we've done 30 minutes on on the opening question. Literally, we'll go on a tangent a lot of times. So yeah. let's see. Um, okay, for the second question, this is from Monica 
Slavoshka. Sorry for the pronunciation, if that's not No, you definitely correct. did a bad job there. Yeah, 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 100%. Okay, do you think having a mentor is important? I think this is a very good question. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things we can say. Um, one thing I'll say, okay, so there's types of mentors in your life. Yeah. It's not just, and I think we should speak removed from trading and yeah. removed from ourselves. Yeah. It should be just very generic. Like, mm. let's say you're someone who wants to be good at something. Yeah. That can be sport, that can be business, that can be dentistry, yeah. whatever it may be. And there's a few ways you can love, learn. There's, there's a hierarchy where the first one will be books. Easily accessible, very general, but you're learning from people who have done great things, therefore have wrote books, and you usually get recommended books, so you know that they have credibility. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're learning their life lessons. Let's say you read um, Alan Sugar's biography. Yeah. You're learning a 40-year business career of a mogul and every lesson he's learned, um, but it's very catered to him. But you're, you're dissecting those lessons and you're trying to apply it to yourself and your own situation. So that becomes like level one mentorship where books can be your mentor, yeah. but you have no one-on-one -on -one interaction. You have no human interaction. You're, you're dissecting and reverse engineering the information. That's the base of it. Yeah, so that, that's kind of where I think everyone starts or should start. That is, that's that where you started, my, yeah. yeah. Actually, I've never read a trading book, really. I've read no, plenty no of books, but more on success, personal development, mindset. Business, routine. All of these kind of things, things, but never really trading yeah. specifically. And I think it's better that way. Yeah. I don't think there's too many good books on technicals, maybe on psychology and all of these kind of things. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of level one. And then level two becomes, let's say, uh, group mentorships of like you have an online one or you attend a seminar or you have a family friend and he's teaching yeah. a couple of you or whatever. Uh, and this then becomes a level up from a book because now you're getting more in-depth information and you're having human interaction. Plus maybe a key. particular skill. So maybe yeah, now it's focused down of like, you're yeah. not going to ask your uncle who's a doctor to help you with trading, even exactly. though he's successful. So that's right. He's industry specific or your goal orientated. You're more like saying, I want to be like this guy. Yeah. Let me emulate what he did yeah. and reverse engineer and learn from him mm -hmm. directly. Uh, so you're kind of under the wing of someone, but it's not catered to anyone. Yeah. It could be trading, could be sales, could be e-commerce, could be Amazon FBA, could, could and, be and so many that's, uh, Or even online courses where yeah. you're not having the human interaction directly, but somebody speaking about their journey and giving direct tips mm -hmm. on how you could improve. Uh, and that's then therefore the next level. And I think the highest level becomes uh, speaking about, let's say your tennis, uh, you were playing a lot of tennis when yeah. you were younger. You have a coach who is usually just with you yeah. and you have your one hour a day, whatever, where he's critiquing you, giving you direct feedback, yeah. knowing what your weaknesses are. Uh, and also you're seeing him play, you're seeing what he's doing. So it's a very, it's a positive feedback loop. Yeah. Uh, so through that sense, I think that's therefore the, the top level the top. of someone who's done it, who knows what they're doing and give you direct feedback. Yeah. Uh, and one element of that, which I think makes, there's obviously pros as each one you elevate to, mm -hmm. but I think the best pro of that one-on-one -on -one kind of situation is that not only are you learning the theory and getting direct feedback catered to you, it's also you're learning things subconsciously. Uh, the example I gave on, on Instagram story the other day was, let's say you have a coach and he's taught you everything and he's critiqued you, uh, but now you're just watching him and you're watching him do his backhand and you're trying to improve your backhand. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's told you, okay, you have your wrist like this, maybe step like this, and you're trying to put it together. But if you're watching him every day do it, maybe the coach doesn't know directly exactly what he's doing to make it so effective. It's more so... He is muscle memory or things he's like he's been doing it for 25 experience. years. Yeah, you can't teach yes. experience. You yeah. can teach the idea of have your hand like this, but not the okay. experience. But if you're watching that and you're subconsciously visualizing that, seeing that, you're naturally going to start to emulate that, start to do the same thing. And therefore, seeing someone in action is a very powerful form of mentorship because not, not even they're teaching you, they're just doing their own thing. But you're watching and then uh, questioning them, whatever. Uh, and I think that's the most powerful element of yeah. that. Um, and I think those three things are very important also because uh, as we were speaking in the previous topic, right, majority of us when we're starting, you don't have money. So you mm. cannot jump into the third step they're expensive. Unless, unless your parents will pay for it, you know, mm. like directly. And then you are three steps. I mean, ahead. we've done it now. So like yeah. uh, with, the, with the business side of what we do, yeah. uh, we, we weren't born to be businessmen and there, there's no natural ability there. Yeah. So you have to either learn from books or whatever, which is again lower level or if you really want someone to come in give you direct feedback which is what we've done but then you know that these you know if you're learning from successful individuals they're not going to charge you 100 dollars. and and this one specifically we've paid well let's not say but multiple five figures yep. just for a consulting for uh, to come and tweak things yeah um actually worth saying alex hormozzi's book something that is what ten dollars or something yeah. that uh, we've all read yeah uh, and i tell everyone to read this book it's, uh, even axel he was like 
He did a five-year marketing degree and he learned more oh. in that one book. He's, he's actually one book really than he did in a five-year degree. Really it sick. shows you the power of reading the right books or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that's the thing. If you start with the right books, it's a very cheap way to get in a proper base and then start making a bit of money, keep investing. Now the second step that you were speaking about, now group, group more, group uh, mentors. Now you make a bit more of money, now you jump into the third step. So it's a natural progression yeah. uh, of... But I think the key okay. there is you have to realize what your relationship with a mentor is. Mm -hmm. And you can think of it, let, let's say, like a father figure, if you want to say it like that, of you, everyone when they're a kid thinks their dad is a superhero. They yeah. know everything, they're the best at everything, uh, because that's who you're around and that's your real mentor in life in the beginning. Yeah. Until later on you realize, okay, everyone's father has weaknesses, they don't know everything, uh, and you try and reach a stage where you come to their level in certain areas and maybe in certain areas surpass them in other areas your dad will know always more okay. but in certain things like say in trading maybe you're a better trader than your dad but he's a wealth manager you, you always surpass your dad yeah. uh, and I think the same with mentors it should be you know when you've reached the limitations of your mentor of, of course you, you're coming in and you're building a personal relationship you're building a friendship you're building attachment you're building dependence on their learn, on yeah. their abilities to guide you and therefore, that can really then bind you and say, okay, I don't want to leave. I have this loyalty to him, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. The real goal of a mentorship is to um, internalize their wisdoms, internalize their beliefs, know what they're doing is so effective, yeah. gain your own insights, own independences, own creativity in there, and then eventually transition to have your own independence. That was what I was going to say. That, in my opinion, a mentor, uh, that's what I thought at the beginning. And you get frustrated because no one's going to give you like the perfect key to it. Everyone has a different journey mm. and everyone has a different story or, or, or path, you know? So I feel like you have to go your own path and then through your own path or story, you pick mentors that you can get things. So for example, I might have a mentor in this field that out of everything he taught me, I maybe just pick this because out uh, of I mean, what I'm experienced of the 10 things he taught me, I cannot maybe use seven because I, I just don't believe in them. Through right, my so th journey. This, this is another side of mentorship that yeah. level, let's say level zero, uh, where the book is level one. Level zero is you have bad mentors. Everyone's going to have a bad mentor. Yeah. But is that a waste of time? Not necessarily. Yeah. Because all of the things that I did in my trading career of retail, Elliott Wave, Ichimoku Cloud, they were not effective. They did not give me the success. Yeah. But I know what doesn't work. I know what is a weakness. I know what is something I should look out for that people are doing. And specifically in Targeted. trading, it's liquidity. Yeah. We need to know where other people go wrong because that's what is driving the market. Yeah. And therefore, understanding what is not effective mm -hmm. is a lesson in itself. Exactly. Um, but actually, this is something we didn't touch upon. Why have mentors in the first place? Or why is it even needed? Um, the thing, that's, that, that's when it like, comes to Why not just path? do it yourself and learn and trial and error and yeah. um, figure I mean, it out, let's say. I mean, in, in that point, I think it saves time. It, like, time I is think, a big one. I yeah. think time is a big one. It's, uh, it's up to the person if he you want to make mistakes for 10 years, five years, or you want to pay someone to then and learn from their, mi and learn from their mistakes. The, exactly. I mean, the also, I think mentor is maybe a very unattractive word sometimes, mm -hmm. especially in our industry where let's not call it a mentor, but let's call it someone you're learning from. Yeah. Like if you put it in a more clean way, like that professional, what is every university? What is every institution? What is school? You are learning from someone who is an expert. Yeah. And maybe a high school teacher is only an expert at that level of maths but you're learning from someone who's one step ahead of you. Yep. So I think that is the real goal of learning is either you figure it out, waste a lot of time through trial and errors, your opportunity cost of if you had saved that time, what could you have done? Mm -hmm. Opportunity cost of instead of saving the money on not learning from, let's say, university, but learning yourself. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you save that money, but how much did you spend in losses or how much did you spend in? Exactly. Um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity costs associated yeah. with that. But um, when you go through those levels, then you start to realize, that, okay, every... Thing you're learning from is a mentor so when you're searching for someone it's just simply someone who is where you want to be and uh, one step ahead of you and then know when you've surpassed that or got the benefit from that yeah and i have a question in this topic because you know i'm not like the best one uh when it comes to like traditional education maybe because I, my passion was never to be a doctor was mm -hmm. never to be a lawyer things like this but this is something in business might be different but don't you think that that mentorship that a lot of people pay outside should be something that should be on universities? What are your thoughts on it? No, um, I, man, this is a topic I think about and speak about a lot. Yeah. Um, and this could be a podcast in itself, but look, 
the reality is not everyone is going the oh. world operates yeah. when you need uber drivers you need waiters you need uh porters in a hotel you need uh nurses and if everyone was let's say a millionaire yeah. everyone's a millionaire therefore the million is worth nothing and you have that inflationary process therefore to say the wealthy only exists because of the poverty or you can only have wealthy if there's um there's a disparity there baseline so the, the world does not work where everyone can be successful again yeah. success whatever that means to you but yeah i'm talking on a financial basis so therefore if you come into schools and start teaching i think there's certain things that should be there like how to do your taxes like basic things basic that, things why are they not there again let's speak about that another time but yeah, if you talk about entrepreneurship most people don't resonate with that because they don't have the characters or the willingness to put the sacrifices in yeah. to do that and i think a consistent stable salary is so underrated in life and entrepreneurship is glamorized online because you see that they have the cars they have this and that and they have the freedom yeah. man you don't realize the burdens they go through the stresses they go through and the relationships family. that may fail yeah. the family relationships that are suffering because they're putting in so much time yeah. entrepreneurship is not an easy thing it's not a glamorous thing it's glamorized uh, and definitely not designed for everyone because i think even just like trading this the statistic of 90% of people lose in businesses I think 90% of people of businesses fail in the first year yeah. something like that. I think 90% of businesses go out of business in the first two years. And and I think for the first two years they're in debt anyway. Yeah yeah exactly. So it's, like, it's it's something general. that is not catered for most people no. anyway. So putting that into a national curriculum of yeah. everyone to learn is not going to is not yeah. going to be effective. Uh, and I think putting the majority of people into traditional careers that are going to give them a good job and stability in life to to fill that character makes sense. But then you're yeah. always going to have that percentile of people that are seeking more, that are willing to do more, that are mm-hmm. sacrificing to strive for something greater. Yeah. And I think that's where entrepreneurship comes in and that's a character trait, yeah. something that is developed. But I think the, the traditional space for education um would not be their go-to anyway. It has to be through people that are doing it and you want to learn directly from them. Yeah, I agree. I I agree that there has to be a path for society because uh you cannot put everyone into that path as you said as or those mentors in there there should be a path a generic path that everyone follows because if not i feel also society will be a mess if people don't go to university people don't go to mm. high school if everyone does a high school dropout society will be a mess man, what, what do you think of that saying of like man at 18 years old the government will give you 100k in debt to go to college or university but won't give you a 10k business loan what is your thoughts on that if you have any uh i think uh from my like perspective on paper it's outrageous right it's they give outrageous. you 100k in debt to go to their yeah. institutions but they won't let you have an entrepreneurship of 10k yeah. yeah from my personal this is just personal perspective is outrageous like i think yeah. yeah i think the same way they put you in debt for the rest of your life and they know that unless okay now you're following this path not this generic path that i'm speaking which is let's say high school university mm. university you go to the maybe your job Then once you reach your job, majority of people will be paying that debt for the rest of their life. It's part of, let's say, the trap of the rat race. And I, yeah. I do have beliefs on it too, but in, in alignment with you is that in now let's say you want to start a business and you're 30 years old. Yeah. Not only are you stuck in your job and you have a mortgage and debts, you have your student loans to pay off. Yeah. So you're not even more trapped of not only did the business have a likelihood to fail or uh, am I going to waste my time, whatever, and the doubts and the stresses that come with that. You're also bound. You literally have weight holding you down, saying, "No, you have debt to pay. You have this to do." My, my have family, kids. Yeah, whatever. at that so point, at that point, it becomes basically becomes a trap. And, and I yeah. completely understand why a lot of people then, of course, cannot do it. But that's the thing. But at the same time, do, I do you think it's designed that aggressively? Of this is how to entrap people, because I, I think it's also very tricky. Because if you're it's in a vocational one. field, lawyer, yeah. medical, um, you know. real um, areas that need qualifications yeah. you can't be a dentist without having proper formal qualifications but you can uh, instead of doing a let's say a language degree to become a translator in 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 an airline or something yeah. you can also just learn languages for way cheaper online yeah. or if you want to be um let's say you do a business management degree mm-hmm. you can either learn or a business degree you can learn through the books and whatever and work in a corporation yeah. or you can study through the online space yeah. or let's say you want to be a writer you can do an english degree mm-hmm. or you just start writing books and figure it out yeah. so i think there's certain things that do not justify the debt because you know your career path and the lifetime yeah. earnings do not justify that investment yeah. of time wasted and, and the ROI so there's certain mm-hmm. things that are needed so i think mm-hmm. that trap is very dependent it depends exactly on, on what on, you're, doing. On, you're going to be a lawyer in the US you're going to be a yeah. doctor in the US you're going to be a dentist in the US that's a different story it's a different story but are you going to study marketing 
and, you, and now you're 50k in debt and you've wasted three years Main, and, you, and yeah. like Axel said you learn more in one book exactly from some, someone who's doing it yeah it becomes a, it becomes tricky, it becomes but... tricky in those sort of extras that I just feel also they've become a business for universities mm. okay because put it like this they put all these courses in there you yeah. have extra things to then offer oh so because because the, the institution the education institutions they know that the money is coming from governments yeah. they can inflate the prices and then therefore the price value proposition does not align yeah. and therefore you're not getting uh, it's not a competitive field where if you have two people who are trying to sell the education mm -hmm. they're trying to give the best offer L let's say it's now your money uh, of you have uh, uh, money to give to an 18 year old yeah would you rather give that money to us to somebody who wants to go to study university or give him 10k or whatever amount to then try a business because if it was my money i would still tell them go to university because I know that at 18, they probably don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't have the character traits to utilize that money to... Yeah. The business is most likely going to fail at that age, speaking yeah. very generally. Yeah. Uh, which is why I understand that that perspective of... That's why, that's why I understand that generic path uh, of everyone following. And then those uh, more ambitious or more like want to go off the road of the mm. traditional path, then go into this... I mean, okay, let me buy these books. Let me go into these mentors. Let me buy... This consulting program, mm. I don't know. And then those people naturally maybe drop out, maybe not drop out and finish like at the degree like we did, and then naturally will go over that path. I, you know what? Um, because we've hired a few people now, we fired a couple of people. Yeah. And now once have we looked at a CV? Now once Literally. have we said what degree Literally. have you done? Now once have we said? Yeah. You know what? Like uh, now we're in this position. We know that finding correct people, hiring the right type of people, is the, the hardest, hardest thing, thing ever. Because man, someone. I know from myself anecdotally from my degree, everyone is a dentist. Now you think dentists is like up here, they're intelligent, whatever. Yeah. But man, my university had every type of person from the lazy one, from the drama person, from the, the person who just passed exams by cheating, whatever. Yeah. I guess to a point where even your credentials on paper on a CV yeah. don't mean much. Uh, and what we've therefore realized is your character is everything and yeah. your work ethic. And uh, I think you can really vibe with a person just by having a normal conversation like this of what mm -hmm. are your beliefs on personal development what are your beliefs on mentorships what are your beliefs on mm -hmm. all of these kind of things and very if someone's important. very like oh you know i did a maths degree and yeah i, I got a good grade yeah okay you know kind of what person they are but if you have another person like we did with axel who okay has a marketing degree on paper maybe not the best but you see his character you see his routines you see his work a ethic, player. A, a player and that's got nothing to do with his uh, degree it's, yeah. it's literally his mindset of what he did at university and after university um which i think um Man, I read this thing of why are top companies hiring from Oxford and Cambridge? Like, why is it so important? Or Harvard only? Yeah. The reason is because when you go to university, every university has more information than you can acquire as a student. You have yeah. a textbook that is this thick that every student has access to. Doesn't matter if you're going to the best university or the worst one. Therefore, university is designed to give you more information than you can uptake. Yeah. Um, so the reason that is is not that they are better educated. They have the same amount of information and they can only absorb a certain amount. The, the value in Ivy League universities or whatever is the scrutiny of how tough it was to get in. Because you know that... Character-based. You know that they had the, let's say, IQ, they had the character, and now these top universities are not even looking at your grades. It's like a benchmark. You get the A grades yeah. just to apply. But then what did you do aside from that? What kind of books did you read? My brother is applying now to university, and his personal statement mm -hmm. is nothing about his grades. It's all about what books did you read to develop your interest yeah. in economics. Uh, so in that sense, the filtration process of top universities, of finding that character, is yeah. what also the best corporations are looking for. Yeah. It's not the degree, it's not the grades. No. It's you went it's to the university. past, also the path from high school yeah. to end up of high school to applying to university, what you've done in those years. Which indicates the kind of character you character have. Character you have, yeah. 100%. Uh, I think that's the main thing in, yeah. let's say, life. is the, yeah. the, What character you have, what approach you have, what mindsets you have in the same system yeah. will birth two different results. So in that sense, I think actually with mentorships too, it's exactly the same. And we've seen it. We've had hundreds of students who have had the exact same information, the same chart work, the same boot camp, the same Literally. community calls, identical input, different outcomes. Why is that? And it's because you have a bell curve in life where you have the people who are terrible, the people who are phenomenal and majority in the middle. Yeah. And as a, a mentorship, let's say, our goal is to just shift everyone to the right. 
make the people who are at the bottom 5% a bit better. Yeah. The people in the top 5% also a bit better. And the average, better too. Yeah. But you can't say to the person that's going to be in the bottom that you're suddenly going to jump to the top 5% Not gonna happen. unless they have a character exactly. change or an approach change. Yeah. Um, so I think the main thing to answer this question of a mentorship is, of course, it's, most, it's really important. And that can be through traditional or non-traditional. Yeah. But essentially, you're learning from guidance of others and internalizing yourself and looking to find independence. But it always be your approach within that is going to um, tell you how your outcome is going to be. Hundred um, percent. Apart from that, I don't think I have too much to add. I don't know if you had anything. No, I think that was all for that point. I think it was two very good questions. Yeah. I think we can. Should wrap we hit it up another one, or should we wrap it? We've Let's been see. going for about an hour. If there's a short question, is there a short question that we can hit, or should we? I think there are two long ones. Okay. I, I mean, mean, knowing us, we're gonna tangent. Yeah, it's gonna be another 20, so, 30 minutes, and I think yeah. we've done an hour. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I think we'll film one very soon as well. So um, we follow us on Instagram. We can film these two on another podcast. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was gonna say, yeah, if you if you follow us on Instagram, we we do a. Po- like a questions box just so you guys can ask us the questions these are all questions you guys have asked so if you'd like to get involved with that and ask us a specific question uh just follow us on instagram and uh, you'll get an opportunity to ask us another thing that i want to add is we're in dubai right now and we've got a lot, a lot of questions on that we'll make a whole video on that but um what we've been doing whilst on this trip or for the last month every single day we've been posting every single trade we took um and it's like up and down only on EU and GU, but you guys have been really enjoying that day-to-day case study on realistically how we are trading. And not only that, you are starting to see that these are not trades that we are coming out of thin air. Because remember, we have a student base who are, we need to defend to them why these trades are within our teachings. Uh, so it's actually a very realistic um, day or a month of how we trade. And also a majority of these trade students are also catching. So if you'd like to get involved with that and see that, we've pegged it in the highlights, but also we'll probably be continuing to do that. So if you'd like to see kind of how we are trading, we didn't speak too much on trading in this podcast, but if you'd like to get involved in more of our technicals, our day-to-day life, uh, make sure you just click the links below where all of our details will be. And yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, you see you guys. First episode. Yeah, see you guys soon.